Right, hello there and welcome to Devlog 1. In this new series on my channel, I'm going to be creating my first actual game. But there's a catch. I'm only allowed to use this one cube. No other art of any kind. And if you're wondering why I made this decision, well, there are two reasons. First, limiting yourself boosts your creativity. A great example of that is a game jam which almost always limits you by either having a certain time frame in which you need to complete your game or by having a certain theme that you need to keep to. And so Game Jam games are because of that always really creative. Second, creating art for your game is difficult, especially when you're only really good at a specific art style or medium. For me, this is pixel art. All my games are made with it, and because I'm not very good at designing and making gameplay, it's usually the most important part of the game. But that also means there is a lot of pressure to create good pixel art, especially because it, well, needs to be pixel perfect. But for this project, I don't have to worry about all of that, and it just feels amazing. Alright, so with all of that out of the way, let's get to creating this game. Luckily for us, even though we aren't allowed to use any other art than this cube, we can still make our game look good. How? Well, we can change the colour of the cube to make our game more diverse, we can add particles to make our game more interesting, we can add lighting to make our game more dynamic, and so much more. Basically, the only thing we can't do is create circles, but everything else is achievable if we just spend enough time. So with knowing all this, let's start with creating the most important part of any game, the gameplay. It's not going to be the selling point of this game, because it's mostly story focused, but it's still incredibly important. So for this game, the main gameplay is going to be a boring office job. This is because our game is going to be about daily life, and most people spend a good part of their daily life at their job. Also an important thing to note is that a big inspiration for this game is the Disney short Inner Workings, just without the actual Inner Workings, if that makes sense. I'll put a link to that short in the description for you to check out after this video. But the only thing you really need to know is that the main character in that short has a very boring job that he has to go to every single day. Alright, let's start working on the gameplay. My idea was to have the player sort pieces of paper, and originally those pieces of paper had text on them that was either straight or not. So the player had to sort out this so called misprints. And this idea would have worked out fine if I was able to create those pieces of paper outside of Unity. But with all the different layers of objects that make up a piece of paper, it was impossible to have them at the right sorting layer at all times. And that is important because you are laying them on top of each other, and you don't want the text of two pieces of paper to be on the same layer. So I decided to avoid all that mess, and I went with the easy option. Instead of having text on the papers, they have a slightly different colour. There are white pieces of paper and yellowy pieces of paper, and your job is to sort them. Because if a piece of paper is getting yellow, the company you're working for finds it too old to use. Alright, so we now have the main gameplay done. The recording may look a bit laggy, but the game itself is performing just fine. Right, so you might think we're done with this scene now, but we're not, because we can make it a bit more interesting, like this. It now looks a lot more dynamic because of the lighting, and with the dust particles it also becomes a bit more satisfying to play, which is important when you have boring gameplay. So with that done, let's make some more scenes. I started by creating a bedroom with our main character sleeping in his bed. And this is what I made. It looks pretty good, but it's also a bit too stiff. We need to animate it. This looks way better. But just like in our last scene, we aren't done 
yet. Let's just add some lighting. Alright, so this now looks finished. I'm happy with it and I really like how it turned out. It really feels like a bedroom and I think the sleeping animation looks great. Alright, so now let's make the thing that is going to wake him up in the morning and start our day. His alarm clock. I started out just like with all the other scenes by adding tons of cubes to our scene and resizing them to look like we want them to look like. In this case, an alarm clock. And I think it turned out pretty good. And this time we already have the right lighting, so we don't need to worry about that. But there is something missing. As you've probably noticed, the alarm clock isn't displaying the time. And this was a tricky thing to add, since I couldn't just use text and add actual numbers because it wouldn't fit the style we are working with, which is a very blocky one, and I couldn't find any good fonts for that specific style. So the only option left was making the numbers by hand, and this took a very long time. But after about an hour or two of trying to get these numbers exactly right, we now have an alarm clock that displays the time. Well, just two times, 6.59 and 7 o'clock, which is when the alarm will go off. And you then have to click it to make it stop and get out of bed. And I think that needs an animation, so let's make that. Alright, so now when the time is 7 o'clock and you click the alarm clock, an arm will come down and turn it off. It will then almost instantly cut to another scene, but we're not going to make that in today's devlog. So we now have our main character's home and his work. Let's connect it to with another very important part of our game, the walk from home to work. This is just going to be your average street with buildings, other people and a city in the background. But let's start with the buildings, because those are the easiest to make. I just made a lot of different buildings, all a slightly different colour, different windows and all a different size. I also made a statue to break things up a bit and at the end you've got your workplace. It's just a boring grey building, but that's all on purpose. Now we get to my favourite part, let's add some lighting. Just like we did in all our other scenes. This just looks really cool. It's far from being finished, but I already really like it. Alright, so now we get to something I really wanted to have in this devlog, but it's going to have to wait till next one. And that is the player itself, and more importantly, their walking animation. Like I've said many times, I'm not good at animation, but making a walking animation with just rectangles is so much more difficult. I'm working on it, but then again I've been working on it for about three days. But I can say that it's coming along alright, and I'll have it done by next devlog. So if you don't want to miss that and want to see what terrible animation I'm going to make, then it might be a good idea to subscribe and maybe even turn on notifications. Also make sure you like this video if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.